Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the five signs that indicate that you need a probiotic. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you all of the actionable steps that you need to do something about it. We're gonna talk timing. We're gonna talk different types of probiotics. We're gonna talk dosage. So you're gonna leave this video knowing exactly what you need to do. So let's get right into it. The first indicator that you need to take a probiotic are your lifestyle factors and medical history. Now there's a big list of different factors, but I've got the five most common for you here. The first is mold illness. The second is amalgam fillings. The third is eating non-organic produce. The fourth is history of antibiotics. And finally, we've got different types of medication like birth control, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, painkillers, and other medication like that. There are other lifestyle factors, but these are the five most common. So if you have any of these, there's a really good likelihood that you need a probiotic. Here's why. First, you have this article about mycotoxins here. It reads, because of their pharmacological effects, some mycotoxins or mycotoxin derivatives have found use as antibiotics, growth promotants, and other kinds of drugs. Still, others have been implicated as chemical warfare agents. This is really interesting because it goes to show you that mycotoxins themselves can be used as antibiotics. Think about how antibiotics were discovered in the first place. You've probably heard the story about the Petri dish with bacteria and the moldy orange and some of the mold falling from the orange into the Petri dish and then it having an antibiotic effect. This is basically how antibiotics were discovered and they were discovered by mold growing on foods. So if you have a history of biotoxin illness, mold exposure, if you've lived in a water damaged building, the mycotoxins that have been produced have a very potent antibiotic effect and we have to correct the damage that's done to the micro flora when you're exposed to these antibiotic substances for extended periods of time. This is actually one of the root causes to my illness. I lived in a water damaged building for about seven years. I knew it was water damaged, but I didn't know that water damage could do so much damage to your health. This is one of the primary influencing factors on my gut dysbiosis situation. So if you have a history of mold and mycotoxin exposure, it's really likely that you're going to need to take some kind of probiotic. The next lifestyle factor I wanted to go into in a little bit more detail was the heavy metals from the amalgams. I found this really interesting study that explains just how much our microbiome protects us from heavy metals. It reads, the importance of gut microbiota in the metabolism of heavy metals was demonstrated using GF mice. GF mice are basically mice that don't have a microbiome. They're basically sterilized in their intestines. This study showed that it was shown that heavy metals significantly accumulated in blood and target organs of GF mice compared to normal mice following exposure. What this tells you here is your microbiome plays an enormously important role in protecting you from heavy metal exposure. If you have any source of chronic metal exposure, this most commonly comes from amalgam fillings, but this can be any source of metal exposure. Anything that is putting metal into your body is going to have a negative impact on your microbiome. And the more this negative impact is allowed to perpetuate the more susceptible you become to heavy metals. This article also has some really interesting diagrams and tables. One showing how heavy metals damage the gut and the other one showing the affinity between different types of heavy metals and different types of bacteria in your gut. So this table is actually very helpful and will help us towards the end of the video figure out what kind of probiotics you might want to be taking. And next we have this final study looking at the effects of birth control on the microbiome. Reading from the article it says, usage is associated with a minor decrease in gut microbiota diversity and differences in the abundance of several bacteria. Now, now I know the article only says minor, but you've got to consider that when you're looking at the microbiome, this is like the straw that broke the camel's back. This is an onslaught of different types of chemicals and toxins and exposures in our environment that are chronically weakening our digestive system and damaging our microflora. It's rarely one thing that completely destroys somebody's health. It's a combination of 1% here and 1% there and 2% here and 3% there. So even though this only shows a minor decrease, this added on top of all of the other things that may have been happening weakens your gut, decreases your microbiome strength, and increases the likelihood that you need and will benefit from taking a probiotic. The second key indicator that you need a probiotic is digestive problems. I really don't think it takes a genius to figure out that if you have digestive problems, you might benefit from taking a probiotic, considering this is where probiotics have their primary effect. So if you're experiencing any type of digestive problem at all, probiotics could be helpful for you. But more specifically, if you are experiencing bloating and gas, food intolerances, especially to FODMAPs, carbohydrates, and lactose, IBS, and constipation or diarrhea, you're especially likely to benefit from taking a probiotic. I wanted to start on this article here, connecting the gut flora and the microbiome to inflammatory bowel diseases. The article starts, the human gut, which is colonized by 
10 to the 14 microbes, 10 times more than human cells. This part of this article in itself already gets you thinking. If you're looking at the health of your digestive system, you want to look at what, what's happening there. What's the, what are the biggest proportion of cells in your gut? And you've got 10 times more microbial cells in your gut alone than your whole body. This isn't comparing the amount of cells that are microbial compared to the amount of cells that are digestive. This is comparing the amount of cells that are microbial to the amount of cells in your whole entire body. If you have this volume, this quantity of different microbes in your digestive system, it really makes you think that they're gonna have a significant impact on the health of the digestive system and maybe other areas of your body too. The article continues and states unequivocally, dysbiosis of the gut bacteria communities can cause many chronic diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease, obesity, cancer, and autism. To me, that makes things very simple. If you don't want inflammatory bowel disease, obesity, cancer, and autism, working on your gut is a priority, and maybe a probiotic is a part of that for you. Now, the connection between what's happening in the microbiome and constipation and diarrhea is very interesting. If you're experiencing diarrhea, and this is like a chronic thing, you know, it doesn't really matter what you eat, you're still having diarrhea regardless. There's a really good likelihood that this is because of your microbiome imbalance. The reason being, your body has diarrhea as an intelligent response. Your body is trying to move something that is in your digestive system out of your digestive system. This is one reason that when you get food poisoning, you get diarrhea and vomiting because your body's trying to clear the digestive system. It's trying to remove this organism, this pathogen out of your body. This isn't really considered a part of your immune system, but if you think about it, it really is. This is the first line of your immune system is your digestive system. If you have something in your gut that is causing a chronic immune burden, if you have a pathogen or a parasite or even just a dis dysbiosis presentation and your digestive system is trying to remove whatever is in there out, you will have chronic diarrhea. If you also have an organism in there that is producing some kind of toxin, a really good example of this would be something like C. diff, which is a really dangerous gut dysbiosis caused by Clostridium difficile and the characteristic symptom is chronic diarrhea that causes extreme dehydration in the patient that can actually cause them to die. But the reason the body has this chronic diarrhea is the toxins that C. diff produce are so toxic that the body is trying to to rid itself of these toxins. So if we have an organism in the gut that is either dysbiotic in nature or is chronically producing toxins, taking a probiotic to help remove this organism, maybe to bind to some of these toxins and shift this microbiome so this isn't happening anymore can be really helpful in resolving chronic diarrhea. I also find it really interesting that we can go completely to the other side of the equation, to the chronic constipation, and probiotics also present a very interesting solution here too. I'll read from the article to start. Levels of bifidobacteria and lactobacillus were significantly decreased in adult patients with constipation. Patients with constipation predominant irritable bowel syndrome, IBSC, exhibited a significant increase of, of bacteroides and enterobacter. Furthermore, the concentrations of bifidobacteria, clostridium, and fecalibacteria presnutiae were decreased in the patients with IBSC. The thing I find most interesting about this article are the levels of bifidobacterium lactobacillus decreasing, and also the levels of fecalibacteria presnutiae decreasing as well. I found both for myself and for many of my clients that you can you can quite literally think about constipation as being a gut flora deficiency. This isn't really a very far stretch if you think about the fact that a bowel movement by dry mass is about 80% living in dead bacteria. This is a fact that actually shocks several of my of my clients because I tell them that when you're when you're going to the toilet, most of what's coming out is not the food that you've eaten. You've absorbed almost all of that. All that remains in your stool primarily is living and dead bacteria. So it, it would make sense that if you're constipated, as in not passing stools or having very small fault or having very small stool volume or experiencing very dry stools that this could be simply because there are not enough bacteria and if that is the case replacing these bacteria is a very simple very logical solution and in my experience has an extremely high success rate if constipation is something that you're currently dealing with i do encourage you to watch to the end of the video but when we finish go and check out my constipation solved guide it's a two-step process that will help you resolve constipation and it has an 80 percent success rate and here's one of the keys probiotic are a massive part of it. So make sure you watch the video first, but go and check that one out after if you're struggling with constipation. Now I've got one final study for you here. 
looking at food sensitivities and intolerances in the connection to the microbiome. It reads, in support of the epidemiological observations attributing a protective role to the microbiota in constraining allergic responses, GF mice, which are born and raised in a sterile environment, have an exaggerated systemic type 2 immune response characterized by high levels of IgE and are more susceptible to oral antigen induced anaphylaxis than mice colonized with a device with a diverse microbiota. So what does this actually mean? What this article is telling us is that the immune response is directly influenced and even regulated by the microbiome. It's telling us that when mice are raised without any bugs in their gut, the immune response that is activated to any immune stimulus is enormously exaggerated, which is what we characteristically see in autoimmune disease. It goes on to say that increased microbiome diversity reduces this kind of reaction. It calms this type 2 immune response, which means that there is a direct link between your gut microbiome and autoimmune disease. I absolutely, I absolutely love this article and it is a fantastic segue into our third key indicator that you may need a probiotic, which is leaky gut and autoimmunity. In just a second, I'm going to walk you through how leaky gut actually causes autoimmune diseases. But first, I've got one more study connecting leaky gut to autoimmunity. Recent advances show a relationship and possible cause and effect between the gut microbiota and the initiation or exacerbation of autoimmune diseases. Furthermore, microbial dysbiosis and leaky gut are frequent phenomena in both human autoimmune disease and the murine autoimmunity models. So this study is also backing up the theory that leaky gut is directly connected to autoimmune health problems. And it also very clearly says the gut microbiota can be involved in the initiation and the exacerbation of autoimmune diseases. So this is saying it can be causal, but it's also saying if you have an autoimmune disease already present for a different reason, it can significantly exacerbate the autoimmune disease. So how does this happen? There's a really important phenomena for us to understand to make this make sense. And this is all about leaky gut and a concept called molecular mimicry. What this means is when components of our food are undigested or when we have bacterial fragments or components that are present in the digestive system that are leaking from the digestive system into the bloodstream, which is never supposed to happen, the body triggers an immune reaction to these molecules. And if some of these molecules look like tissues in the human body, the body also triggers an immune reaction to them too. So let's look at this in a practical example. Let's say you eat a food that contains a molecule that looks like a part of your cartilage in your knee. If this molecule then leaks through the bloodstream, if this molecule then leaks through this gut barrier into the bloodstream, the immune system will activate as this molecule is never supposed to be here. And this is an appropriate immune reaction. If this happens as a one-off event, there's no problem. But if this continues to happen, the body becomes activated in this immune response and it keeps producing inflammatory molecules and immune activation to this substance. This substance looking like your knee means all of these circulating immune molecules can also plug into your knee and trigger an autoimmune reaction. So your immune system that was attacking a foreign invader molecule that was actually completely calibrated and balanced and healthy when chronic can attack tissues that look similar to this molecule. Now this looks different for everyone for a myriad of different reasons. First of all, we've got different molecules absorbing through the gut. This can be because of different foods we're eating. This can be because of different microbes in our gut. And based on our genetics and other factors, our tissues look different. And this is why some people can eat certain foods and have no problems and other people eat them and have problems. But the common denominator here is the leaky gut. If we can reduce the permeability of the digestive system, the molecules never enter the bloodstream in the first place. The immune system is never activated and the autoimmunity never develops. Now, of course, there are other reasons for autoimmunity, but they can also be really connected to leaky gut for another reason. And this is chronic toxicity. We've just seen in previous studies how much our microbiome protects us from heavy metals. But the truth is our microbiome protects us from all fat soluble toxins. So this is heavy metals, but this also includes plastics. This includes pet pesticides. This includes mycotoxins. There is a whole list of toxins that our microbiome protects us from. So if our microbiome is imbalanced and our gut is leaky, we are exposed to significantly more toxins. And when these toxins get lodged in our cells, our body wants to clean them. And sometimes the way the body does this is by triggering autoimmune based reactions. Autoimmunity is never that your body is stupid. Your body is not stupid. It is one of the most intelligent organisms on the planet. If it's triggering an autoimmune response, 
response, there is a very good reason. And in my experience, for most people on a physiological level, it's either coming from leaky gut causing a molecular mimicry reaction or it's chronic toxicity. And in both cases, the gut is extremely important and the microbiome is extremely, extremely important. I cannot emphasize enough how important your microbiome is in both of these situations. Moving on to key indicator number four that you need a probiotic are fatigue and brain fog. Now we're starting off with a really nice study here looking at people with chronic fatigue syndrome. The reason that I chose this study is that fatigue and brain fog are experienced in their most extreme way in this condition. I know because I had it. The article says, interestingly, some potentially beneficial genre such as bifidobacterium, rosburia, and fecalibacterium display a notable decrease in CFS patients compared to healthy controls. Now, first of all, I want you to notice some of these organisms we have already looked at and are connected to constipation, autoimmunity, and other things we've already covered in the video. So this is really starting to build you with a solid idea of what we're gonna be doing probiotic-wise to fix these problems. I also think it's really important to note that we're looking at the extreme, but you don't have to have chronic fatigue syndrome to be experiencing some of these symptoms. We look at the extremes so that we can see things more clearly. But this article leads you to a very solid conclusion that if you are lacking in your bifidobacterium, rosburia, or fecalobacterium, there's a really good likelihood that this is affecting your energy levels and your cognitive ability. The next study was actually more treatment-based and they looked at using targeted probiotics to improve central nervous system function. The article reads, the use of probiotics can be particularly recommended to support cognitive functions. Most work has been done on animals, but the portability of results to humans seems realistic. Bifidobacterium longum, Breve and Infantis, Helveticus, Rhamnosus, Plantarum and Cassii were most effective at improving central nervous system function. And the metrics they were measuring here are anxiety, depressive, effectiveness, stress, and memory. So this study really shows us we're not just talking theory here. We have actually in practice seen that treatment with probiotics improves central nervous system function. Now, I don't think this really takes a genius to figure out why. First of all, if you're improving the conditions in the gut, you're improving your detoxification, you're reducing this leaky gut, which is gonna have an anti-inflammatory effect, an immunomodulating effect. It's gonna help the body feel calm. Something really interesting that I found is your body responds to stress of any kind in the same way. This can be work stress. This can be financial stress. This can be relationship stress. But this can also be physiological stress. If your body is experiencing lots of inflammation, if your body is experiencing autoimmunity, if your body is even experiencing a strong immune response, a healthy immune response, like a cold or a flu, it causes the same kind of stress response. And the first things that you lose when you're chronically stressed are energy and cognitive ability. There's also a completely different vector to this that we can look at. Many neurotransmitters and different substances that we need for brain function, for muscle function, come from the digestive system. A really obvious example is serotonin. If you've watched this video through to this point and you've watched any of my other videos, you probably already know this, but 80% of serotonin comes from your gut. We have more serotonin in our digestive systems than in our brain. And this is just one molecule. There are thousands more molecules. There's probably molecules that we haven't even discovered yet, that we probably don't even know they exist. But this gut-brain connection is being emphasized over and over and over again and with very good reason, it is extremely important. And speaking of the gut-brain connection, gives us a really nice transition into our final point. The fifth key indicator that you may need a probiotic are mental health problems. Now, we're not really gonna to touch on any new science here. We're gonna use the points that we've covered in three and four, but we're gonna extrapolate them to look at this situation from a mental health perspective. So we just talked about serotonin. And what does serotonin do? It makes us feel happy. So it's not a very far jump to make that if we're experiencing chronic depression, chronic low mood, chronically overwhelmed with negative emotions, maybe serotonin isn't very high. And where's serotonin coming from? Where's it coming from? Our gut, that's correct. Something that I found really interesting when I was learning about serotonin is how there's no serotonin in the foods we eat. There's a precursor called 5-HTP, 5-hydroxytryptophan. And for 5-hydroxytryptophan to be turned into serotonin, we need the correct microbes. If you don't have the right bugs in your gut, you cannot do this conversion correctly. You can also look at the types of medication that we use for treating conditions like anxiety and depression. These are SSRI medications, selective serotonin 
reuptake inhibitors. If that doesn't tell you that serotonin is a big part of this equation, then I don't know what will. We have an article here that reads, on the other hand, dietary components, including probiotics, e.g., surprise, surprise, lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, and others could exert protective effects against mental disorders by enhancing beneficial gut microbiota while suppressing harmful ones. I love the final few words in this study, whilst suppressing harmful ones. So not only do we have negative effects on our mental health by not having the correct organisms that produce substances for us like serotonin, but we can also have other organisms in our digestive system that produce substances that affect our mental health negatively. Now I've got two connected studies that are just the icing on the cake that put this whole problem together. The first one reads, we report that peripheral administration of lipopolysaccharide, LPS, activates IDO and culminates in a distinct depressive-like behavioral syndrome. So breaking this down for you, LPS, lipopolysaccharide, is a type of endotoxin. The place this is most commonly found is in our digestive systems. If you have increased intestinal permeability, you will be constantly trickling lipopolysaccharides from your gut into your bloodstream. These lipopolysaccharides activate IDO, and when this process happens, it lowers our serotonin, which, surprise, surprise, leads to these animals behaving in a distinctly depressive-like behavioral syndrome. So if you are having mental health problems, especially on this depression side, but this, this is one molecule, this is one avenue we're looking at. We're looking at serotonin and lipopolysaccharide. There are thousands of different molecules in the gut. If you have any kind of mental health condition, you have to look at your gut first. It's so important. I personally really suffered with depression, with anxiety. I've had several panic attacks. I felt suicidal for extended periods of time. I've experienced severe depersonalization and derealization where I didn't even feel like life was really happening or that I was even me. And yes, there was, there was some trauma to work through and I've been doing that. However, I know without a doubt that my microflora has played an enormous impact on my mental health. And as I've continued to work on it over the years, my mental health has improved and improved and improved. This final study that I wanna share with you here. Lipopolysaccharide administration induced depression-like models in mice is commonly used to study the mechanisms of inflammation associated depression and the therapeutic effect of drugs. And this is the final piece that, that just blows my mind, especially when we're looking at the modern medical model. What this is telling us is that modern medicine understands that lipopolysaccharides induce depression-like behavior. They understand that the reason they do this is through some kind of inflammatory mechanism. Yet the solution that they present is a therapeutic intervention with drugs on the serotonin level. But why don't we look at the root cause? Why don't we look at the lipopolysaccharides? Why don't we look at the inflammation? Because we know these are the things that are actually causing these mental health problems. So just to elaborate, if you still didn't understand, the way that researchers test medication depression is by injecting mice with lipopolysaccharide, this endotoxin that can be produced in your digestive system that will leak into your body if you ha don't have the correct microbiome and you have increased intestinal permeability. Well, I have to say congratulations for making it this far into the video. You clearly have a very good attention span. And I hope that with everything that we've looked at so far, you can clearly see how the gut and the microbiome can cause all of these different problems, how all these symptoms that you may be experiencing or lifestyle factors and medical history that you may have may be contributing to your need for a probiotic. And I'm going to give you the solution now. I'm going to help you figure out exactly what you should do about it. If you've enjoyed the video up until this point, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel because I'm dedicated to pumping out videos that are really high quality, that are full of transformation, that are going to help you live the life that you know that you could live. I promise you healing is possible and I, I want you to subscribe to this channel so that you can be constantly reminded of that and so that I can show you exactly how to do it. So if you're enjoying the video, give me a thumbs up, give me a like below, subscribe and leave me a comment. Let me know if you've learned something new. It really means a lot to me. It really, it really motivates me to make more content like this for you. So what do we do about it? The first thing I want to say is nothing works for everybody. Everyone has a different microbiome. Everyone has different genetics. Everyone has different root cause factors. Everyone is gonna need a different personalized approach. But you've been looking at the same data that I've been looking at. I have shown you the organisms that have been analyzed in these studies. And I think by this point, you've probably come to similar conclusions as me. We need to be looking at your bifidobacterium, your lactobacillus, your acamansia, your fecalibacteria prosnutiae. These are some of the most important microbes in your gut. And they also play significant roles in influencing other organisms in your gut too. So as for lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, these are really easy. 
we can just take a supplement. Now, my favorite supplements with regards to lactobacillus and bifidobacterium are the ones on offer at Custom Probiotics. These are the probiotics that absolutely changed my life. These are probiotics that I use with almost all of my clients. These are the probiotics that I personally take myself. I am not affiliated with these. However, if I could be, I would be. I'd love to make money on you getting well. So where do we start? My suggestion would be for, for most people to look at the Custom Probiotics D-lactate free formula. Reason being, there's five or six strains. These are the most gentle strains. They are histamine degrading. They are mast cell activation syndrome safe. They are D-lactate free, which means they don't contain D-lactate and D-lactate producing organisms, which again is a gut-based molecule that can cause fatigue, especially chronic fatigue, if that's something that you're dealing with. They're a really nice blend of organisms that start to make your microbiome balanced and create a nice environment for other new organisms to move in when we get to that. If you've tried probiotics in the past and you've had really bad reactions, you might want to consider working with a single strain instead and building up your dose on just a single strain. If you're going to do this, I would suggest Bifidobacterium longum or Bifidobacterium infantis. The reason for this is these organisms really help to set up a nice space for different organisms to begin to move in. They're also very gentle. You can hear in B. infantis, infant. This is primarily in children's guts and sets a nice foundation. And I find that B. longum does a similar job, but in adult guts. My suggestion is, is generally to build up to being able to tolerate the D-lactate free formula at, at least four baby scoops per day. This is half an adult sized dose. And somewhere between four and eight baby scoops, we want to transition onto the next level of probiotic, which is the 11 strain formula by the same company. The reason that we want to do this is more diversity is more better. I know that sounds funny, but that's basically how your gut works. What makes your microbiome strong is diversity, because the more diversity you have, the more balance you will have as well. Different organisms eat different things. They're antagonistic to different organisms. They have affinities for different toxins. The more diverse your microflora, the more versatile, the more abundant, the more healthy it is. If you're getting PT PTSD, just at the thought of taking a probiotic, please go and check out my other video called The Goldilocks Zone. This is a video that helps you figure out how to optimize your probiotic dose. I believe healing has a very soft, kind, and gentle energy. I don't support extreme detox reactions, severe Herxheimers. That is not how I work and that is not what I'm encouraging you to do. So if you don't know how to dose your probiotics correctly, please go and check that video out because it's a, it's a very in-depth topic that requires a lot of understanding and there's no way I could just stick it on the end of this video. It really is its own video and you have to go and watch it. So if you really wanna make sure you're getting your probiotic dosage correct, please go and check the Goldilocks Zone video. I promise you that video will completely change your life forever. Now, if you've tried some of these things and you know they don't work for you, maybe they do cause these strong reactions, maybe they just don't agree with you, maybe you want to try something else. You've got some other options that we can look at as well. You could consider trying soil-based organisms. So these are organisms that do not colonize your digestive system. These are organisms that will move through your digestive system and they will do some immune modulating, some microbiome modulation, some detoxification, some cleaning, and they can improve your tolerance of these other types of probiotics. But as you saw in these studies, the lack Lactobacillus, the bifidobacterium, they're really, really important. So really, we do want to get you tolerating these at some point. We can also move to fermented foods if you can if you can handle them. So this would look like kefir, kimchi, sauerkraut, whatever it is you like. I, I will say, I don't even consider yogurt a probiotic. The amount of organisms in yogurt is very, very low. So eat yogurt if you like it, but don't consider it probiotic. So how do we take them? What's the best way to take probiotics? The way that I would encourage you to take probiotics is, first of all, if you have a capsule around your probiotic, make sure you open the capsule and sprinkle it on your tongue. Your oral microbiome is very important. Putting probiotics, sprinkling the powder in your tongue, will colonize your mouth, will colonize your sinuses, will colonize your stomach. And if you take them in a capsule, this doesn't happen. And the way your digestive system works is top down. So if you have dysbiosis up here that you aren't correcting, even if you're taking probiotics, you're not going to get the same benefit. This is one reason that I really like the custom probiotics is they come in a loose powder, which allows you to really customize your dose, but you're also putting it straight on your tongue, which is going to influence your oral and your sinus microbiome. It's also going to influence your lung microbiome, your stomach, and all these other really important areas. And the best way that I've found to take these is either first thing in the morning before you've had any food or the last thing before you go to bed. The reason for this is we want to take them away
away from food because if we take them with food, our stomach is going to produce lots of acid and the acid is going to kill the bacteria. If we take them as far away from food as possible, both of the sphincter valves in the stomach are open, which means the probiotic and the water is just going to wash straight through. The acid is going to have almost no impact on the dose and these organisms can get to where we really want them to be. If taking them at night gives you problems, then don't take them at night. I personally can't take probiotics at night. It really affects my sleep. It makes my digestion feel horrible. I do them first thing in the morning. But if you can take them at night and you feel no worse for it, then absolutely go for it. As for the Akkermensia and the Fecalibacteria, Presnutia, you can't really supplement these. There are some new Akkermensia probiotics on the market, but these are really new and I don't even know how well they work. But what's most important for these organisms is your diet. The way that you improve your Akkermensia and your Fecalibacteria are through different types of plant polyphenols. So when we're looking at polyphenols, you're thinking different types of colors, tastes, aromas. Think about that blue compound in blueberries or the black compound in blackberries. Think about the green in a kale leaf. And as far as smells, think about chocolate. Think about coffee, onions and garlic. All of these colors, smells and tastes come from different plant polyphenols. And these are what feed your microbiome. So combining a, lacto, a lactobacillus and bifidobacterium probiotic with a diverse diet with all of these different types of polyphenols, you're covering those four main bases. All of the topics that we've covered in today's video, lifestyle factors like mold, amalgams, medications, different types of digestive issues, IBSC, IBSD, autoimmunity, leaky gut, mental health, fatigue and brain fog. These are all topics that we talk about on a daily basis inside our Obviously Healing community. The sole intention of the Obviously Healing community is to help you consistently on a daily basis implement the dietary and lifestyle factors that are going to help you achieve the health outcomes that you are aiming for. We're a private support group on WhatsApp and I'm active in there every single day answering your questions to make sure that you know what you need to be doing and supporting you with accountability and even sometimes just a friendly ear of somebody who actually knows what you're going through. If you found this video very interesting, if the stuff I've talked about here today are things that you are going through on a daily basis, this is the community for you. And if you feel like you need a little bit of extra support, if you want to be a little bit closer to me, if you want to make sure that you are doing the things that you need to do to get the health outcomes that you're aiming for, I would love to invite you to come and join me in my healing community. If you have any interest in that, please just look in the description. There'll be a link, click the link, and it will take you over to a page so you can come and join me. And all of the other people that are working hard and taking the actionable steps that they need to also achieve their health outcomes. That is everything for me today. I hope you found this video really interesting, really helpful, really informative. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.